Hey, scrappy ladies, how are you? Colleen here. It is day 20 of Now You Know November. I can't even believe we're on day 20 already. I got to tell you, man, crazy. Hey, if you're watching live or if you're catching this live, give me a thumbs up or say hi in the comments so I know you're here. If you're watching the replay, pretend it's live because it's the same thing. You can still ask questions and engage in whatever you want to do. So, ooh, I'm looking at myself and I'm, ooh, it's been, it's been a rough week. Hey, Tina, how are you? I'm so glad you joined. It's been a long week, but it has a very happy ending. My hubby has been in the hospital. He needed a procedure. It got more complicated than we thought. Procedure went well. All is good. It looks like he's going to come home tomorrow, but I'm feeling a little like, ah, oh, you know, like when the adrenaline wears off and it's just kind of like, oh, boom. So anyhow, I'm looking forward to a little time off with my family over Thanksgiving and all of those great things. But today I wanted to talk about something I see happen over and over and over. And I'm going to call, I think I'm going to theme this week as like the Scrappy Reality Series. So today I want to talk about a very serious syndrome that many of us have been afflicted with, and I call it the cart before the horse syndrome. The cart before the horse syndrome. And here's what it looks like, and here, I was guilty of it. I was very guilty of it in my first business. I will just say that, you know, guilty as charged. But here's what the cart before the horse syndrome is. I know that it is so natural and it's, you want to jump to the good stuff when you're starting a business, right? You want to jump to the good stuff. You want to jump to, um, oh, what will my brand colors be? Or what's my logo? Or, oh, I need a really good tagline. Or all of those things, the sexy stuff, the kind of fun stuff. But I got to tell you, if you do it before, uh, before you should, it's a complete waste of time. It's a complete waste of time because here is why. If you don't know what you're selling, and I mean exactly what you're selling, and to whom you're selling, and I mean who, like you really, really know them. We've talked about getting to know your ideal customer. Um, then there is no human possible way that you can start determining what you're branding is or what your messaging is or what your colors are because if you don't know who you're selling to or what you're selling you can't figure those things out those things are kind of like I really want to say like the last piece of the puzzle before you open your doors for business I mean seriously those are like the very last things you do so like in uh, my program oh stay tuned for an email very exciting that is the last very last thing that goes into a business before you quote open your doors and it's also uh, like branding um, like your logo and colors um, it's just not it's just not as important I know it's the fun stuff people are like I want to get a really cool logo and I want to find my cool colors and those things but it is a complete waste of time until you know who who you're selling to and what you're selling and that is where the hard work comes in that's that laying that foundation is not sexy it's not because you're not picking fun colors but it is going to set you up for total success in the future so I've seen it more than more than once where people say oh I need to find somebody to do a logo and I'm like oh that's awesome what do you like what do you sell oh I'm not hundred percent sure yet uh, you don't need a logo then yet folks you don't need a logo what you need is a product you need a plan. You need to know who the heck you're selling to. That's what you need. You don't need brand colors. You don't need a tagline. You don't need a business card. You don't need a logo until you know what it is you do. I know that sounds like really common sense, but I also know that it's really easy. Uh, oh, hey. Oh, look at uh, now. I'm just breaking my own rule. I'm jumping in and saying hi to folks and don't do this. Don't do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so I'm saying hi. Lots of folks jumping in. Oh, good. We caught Kathy at lunchtime and Tina probably at lunchtime too. Thanks so much for the good words about my hubby. He is recovering and now I'm going to need a nap <laughs> after taking care of him and going back and forth to the hospital. So great you ladies are here. But it's really about, um, 
I know how easy it is to want to jump to the fun stuff because laying the foundation can be really hard and tedious and just not fun or sexy. But, but if, if you just decide to say, hey, I'm going to spend, you know, whatever time I need to lay the foundation and get all of that stuff right, then when you get to the fun stuff and the sexy stuff, then you're going to have like a freaking ball with it. Because that's when you can really run with your creativity. If you start choosing, here's what happens. If you start choosing brand colors and taglines and logos and whatnot before you know what you do or who you're going to sell it to, you're picking for you. You're picking something fun for you. And you may not be your ideal customer. In fact, I would probably say 99.99999% of the time, you are not your ideal customer, even if you're damn close. Like I am damn close to my ideal customer. I help women over 50, you know, start businesses. So I'm damn close, but I am not you. I have to listen to you. I have to listen to you, the customer. And that takes a lot of time. So when you put the cart before the horse, you're not going to get anywhere real fast. You're going to waste a lot of time. You may, you know, you may waste money on a graphic designer or something like that. It's a waste of time until you do the, the legwork. You got to do the legwork first to make sure the cart is in front of the horse. And then, as I was saying, once you get to the point where you really know what you're going to sell, who you're going to sell it to, that's when it gets really fun to start creating like the brand and the colors and the taglines and the messaging. That's when you can start getting really creative because you know who you need to be creative for. You have an actual persona in mind and a product. That's when you can start getting really, you know, fun and exciting and brainstorming and all of those things. But until you go through the process of knowing what it is you're going to do, who you're going to sell it to and who are you in the mix? Like who, who are you? Like what is your, um, you know, a lot of, uh, some marketers will call it like your secret sauce or your superpower. I just kind of call it your voice or, you know, your uniqueness, your specialness. You know, you have to really find that as well and own that. The bottom line is I guarantee whatever it is you want to do as a business is being done somewhere else. And if it's not, then you might need to reconsider because there's not a market for it. So, What's important is, you know, there's no such thing as a new idea out there. So what is new is how you're going to approach it. So you need to find that you really need to start dissecting that and understanding that. Like what what are you bringing to the table for this business? Oh, I see a question coming in. I'm going to look. I've done that with past business startups and actually thought I couldn't go forward with the business until I had those in place. Many never launched due to that crazy. Yeah, Tina, you are not alone. A lot of people confuse branding with the business. And it's easy to confuse because we see the we see the fun, glitzy stuff. Like when people are starting a business and you see like, oh, their new logo, their new website, their new this, their new that. If they're really a business, a credible business or something that's really going to have legs is what you didn't see was all the groundwork before. You didn't see that groundwork that happened before. So we tend to see, you know, we tend to jump to the fun stuff because that's what we see in the end. But what we don't see is that beginning stuff, that ugly stuff when you go through notebooks upon notebooks trying to figure out, you know, who the heck your customer is and what makes you unique and why would somebody, you know, buy your thing versus somebody else's thing kind of thing. That's that's the hard part. That's the legwork. That's that's actually where that's the toughest part of this business. I will say that a lot of women, I think, in our peer group think it's the tech stuff. No. The tech stuff is learnable. It's absolutely learnable. It's just step by step by step. It's learnable. The toughest part of any business is where any entrepreneur, I don't care what your age is, can really get tripped up because they want to jump to the fun stuff. And I do think one advantage we have in our peer group is, and I've talked about it many times before, is we, we grew up learning where we had to think through things. I call us the whiteout generation because we had to type, we had to use typewriters and we had to use whiteout to fix our 
mistakes. And so we would think things through more. So we, we um, have more, I want to say, like critical thinking skills, whereas a lot of the millennials today, when they're starting businesses, they use what I call the spaghetti model, where they throw a bunch of crap against the wall, see what sticks. And then what doesn't stick, they just move on and try something else. I, pr I don't like that. And I just, I don't think we work that way in our age group. We want to know that if we're going to put the effort in, that it's going to work, it's going to be a real business. So it's really critical that you don't put the cart before the horse, even though that's what we tend to see. And, you know, what happens when you get in this world, especially on social media, like say you want to start a business, no matter what the business is. So for example, like Kathy, who is here, um, has, you know, is building a business on self-publishing because she has a ton of experience in self-publishing. So she's going to develop courses and whatnot. That is huge. But what she has to do first is there are a lot of kind of publishing courses out there, right? So Kathy has to figure out her unique sauce, which I think she has. She loves to do like local histories and that kind of thing. But she's also going to have to figure out her voice in, in this process and what makes her self-publishing knowledge valuable and unique. And then who is she going to sell this to? Because she can't start messaging or um, even promoting to people until she is damn sure who she's talking to. So I've even been, um, this these last three months, honestly, I have been in kind of in testing mode with ads, for example, and this is part of the process. Like I know who my customer is. I know I did that legwork for months. Last summer, I held workshops, I did discovery calls, I talked to people. So I know my customer. I think I'm getting to me. I know who me, like in the picture is. And then I had to, the, only then can you even start testing some of these things to see if they hit, like and what what works and what doesn't, um, and just to figure things out. But a lot of people, Tina, like you said, you you think that you have to have a website, brand, logo, colors, tagline, and that means you have a business. And that just means you have a brand, logo, and a website. It doesn't mean you have a business. The business is really figuring out what you sell to and to whom you're selling it, like really knowing the customer inside and out and knowing what it is you want to sell inside and out. And I will say, you know, it took me a long time and a lot of research to get to that point before I was ready to jump in to um, taglines and that type of thing. The... Uh, for me, my business, for example, my logo, I was able to do a bit earlier because I knew my age group and I knew kind of who I wanted to hit. So I was able to do a little bit of that earlier, but that's not always the case. That is not always the case. You don't know if you're going to be selling to women and men, a certain age group in a certain area, a certain, I mean, there's so many variables, but I think what we see, we see the shiny stuff. And we think that's the business when that's really just the representation of the business. That's how we um, kind of put our voice out there and our energy and our vibe out there. But until you really know what your business is. So uh, Tina, for example, I know you're very interested in doing planners and the stickers and whatnot. There are a lot of planners out there. So who do you want to design planners for? Who do you want to design stickers for? What is your niche? What? Who are these people? How are you going to talk to them? What is your business? Why your plan or not somebody else's? And that's what you have to figure out first. That is what you have to figure out first. And so what I would say is if you are able to write like a home page of a website, then you're probably ready to open your doors for your business. Because being able to say, hey, this is the scrappy frontier. I help women over 50 start businesses. Until you're able to say, hey, I'm Tina. I create planners for blah, blah. You know, you have to be able to uh, really articulate it well. And then the other stuff comes into place. And then quite frankly, uh, marketers will probably disagree with me, but say I decided that I didn't like my logo. Probably if I change it in a year, it's not really going to matter. What matters is the content, 
the product and how I message it with my customers and the relationships I build. The other stuff is just this shiny storefront. It's important. I'm not going to say that it's not important, but it's when you're building a business, it's the least important part of it. And it's the thing that people want to jump to first. It's the thing they want to jump to first, and it's the thing they should actually be doing last. What you need to be doing first is figuring out what it is you do, how you're going to do it, who, who is it for, how are you, you know, what is your value in this proposition? And that's real, that's the tough part to figure out, I got to tell you. And, and I'm not saying you're going to figure it out one day and like, this is it, it's figured out and I'm going to open my doors. You're always going to be evolving, but you need to know pretty damn well up front or you can't even start testing your messaging. And, you know, I've had some lessons these last few months, um, testing some ads. So we were testing ads and I do work with somebody. I, I get help for Facebook ads. I did budget for that because that was something that it overwhelmed me a little bit. Quite frankly, now that I'm in the process a bit, I feel much more comfortable with it and I shouldn't have been overwhelmed with it, but that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but anyhow, it was a really interesting process because um, she's a much younger gal. She's a, millenn a millennial. Um, and so we, I listened, she's, she's bright, really great at what she does. And we tried some ads and there was just something to me. I'm like, okay, we're going to go with it. Cause she's a really good strategist and whatever. And they didn't do as well. They were, um, kind of flashy and kind of gimmicky and they needed to be disruptive to get people's attention. I understand all of that stuff, but I just kept Something was gnawing at me, and in the end, when we changed, I said, I want to try just something uh, really just kind of plain and simple, like, hey, I'm Colleen. This is what I do. Like, no gimmicks, no anything. Those ads are like, boom, gangbusters, going gangbusters. And you know what it is? It's like, I think I wasn't listening to my gut and my market, but I had to listen to my market. And when I sat back and said, why are these kind of flashy ads not working? because we're not of that flashy generation in a sense for social media. All of these memes and things like that, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily really capture our attention. So it was a good lesson to learn, but I had to sit back and say, what is my customer thinking? Why is my customer not attracted to these ads? So if you're Creating your brand before you have a business, you're creating a brand for you and what you like and your colors and your messaging. So that's why it's a waste of time because you really have to listen to your customers. You really have to listen to your customers. And this month, for example, in this Now You Know November, this has been like one big kind of market research project for me. It's been great, but it's also given me the opportunity to listen. I can tell like some of these videos, some days people like jump in and they start looking and I can tell what they're interested in and other days it's a little flatter. And so you can start, I use that information now to understand what my customer is telling me. I know my customer is customer is telling me they want more technology tutorials, like very specific how-tos. I know that. I see that loud and clear through what I'm doing and the engagement I'm getting. But the point is, had I just made a plan first and then trying to shove it down your throat, it doesn't work. It has to come from the customer. It has to come from the customer and from your product. So I'm Again, three minutes over my 15 minute mark. One of these, I'm, by one of these days, I'm gonna get under 15 minutes. So the cart before the horse syndrome is very, very common. It's very, very appealing to jump to the fun and sexy stuff, but you're not, that's not a business. Having a logo and a brand color is not a business. It's just kind of a fancy storefront. Spend the time doing the legwork. Spend the time doing the legwork. Um, and, you know, and in my program, boy, that is what I do. It is not fun. It is not sexy. It's a lot of legwork. But at the end, you will know exactly what your product is. You will know who your customer is. And that's when you can start getting to the fun part because then you can start talking to potential customers. And that's when you can really start getting a feel for what your brand needs to look like and you know, feel like kind of thing, but you got to have the product first and you have to have the customer first, or you're just going to have a bunch of fancy, you know, business cards and nobody, nothing to sell and nobody to sell it to. So that is my 
my Facebook Live for today, the cart before the horse syndrome. We've all had it, so I say stop. <laughs> Let the poor horse go and let, you know, let's start working on, let, on your leg work. Like, like, let's lay the foundation of what it is you do, what you sell and to whom you sell it. So I'm going to say thank you for joining me today. Thanks ladies. I'm so glad you were able to join me on your lunch breaks and wherever you are. I appreciate it. And if you're catching the replay again, it's just like it's live. And I was doing the math today. So there's like, uh, couple hundred people in the scrappy frontier business group and there's like a hundred in the in the excuse me in the bit on the there's like a couple hundred in the business page and there's only like a hundred in the group so that math is not adding up so if you want to join the Facebook group too please do we're having lots of fun over there as well real conversations you can get feedback that type of thing so if you haven't yet joined the scrappy frontier group please do I will put a link in the description so you can join easily I will see you here again tomorrow when I am talking about, what am I talking about? I can tell you what I'm talking about. Let me look at my calendar here. Ooh, tomorrow's a good one. Tomorrow is another good one. We're going to talk about, are you a, how do I kind of person, or are you a, am I person, or I am person? It'll make sense tomorrow, I promise. I promise it'll make sense. So, oh. Oh, hi, Kathy. No, I, I don't think I have a problem on my end. At least um, I've been continuing to talk. So if I'm talking to myself, I apologize. <laughs> but I, Tina's still here. So I think maybe um, the feed just got wonky maybe on your end. But I'm signing off for now. Thank you for joining me. Cart before the horse syndrome. We've all had it, but uh, it's time to get rid of that affliction. Let the poor horse go and just start working on your business, okay? And I will see you all here tomorrow again. And uh Happy Monday. Have a fabulous evening. Thanks, ladies. Cheers.